Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this short tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can make this awesome 3D animated cube that has your actual content and slides inside it. So let's jump straight into it. There are three distinct parts to creating this animated cube. So firstly let's create the slides that go on the faces of the cube. So to save time I'm going to start with some slides that I've already created but you can use anything you want for these. There's only one thing to make sure you do and that is to make your slides square so they fit perfectly on the cube. And to do that you can simply go to design, slide size, custom slide size and then enter the width and the height the same. The default height for a new presentation is 19.05 centimeters so I've just set the width to be the same 19.05 centimeters. If you're working in inches, you can simply set the width to the same as the height value. Now we've got our square slides, you can design them however you want. And I've designed six here, one for each face. And once we've done that, we can go to File, Save As, then choose PNG Format. You can choose the folder you want to save these to, then click Save. And I'm going to select All Slides, which will export all six. So now we have the six PNG files exported. We can now use Blender to add them to the faces of a 3D model. So Blender is a free to use 3D modeling application and it can be very complex and do everything, but we're going to just use it very simply to add six images to the faces of a standard cube. There's a link in the description below to download Blender. So now we'll run it up. We can click to remove this splash screen and you'll see that we start off with a default cube. This is perfect because this is exactly what we need for our 3D model. So the first thing we're going to do is create six textures that we're going to use one for each face. And to do that, we click on this button here, material. Then we click on this dot here for base color. And then we choose image texture. And we click open image. We then find wherever we saved our slides, I put mine in here, cube slides, and you'll see the six PNG files there. If you roll over them, it shows you a preview of what you saved. So I'll select number one and then click open image. And that will put in there slide1.png. This is great because once we've created this and saved it, we can always update those PNG files and then re-export the model for anything we want. Now we can name this. So if we double click here, I'm going to type PNG1. You can name this whatever you want, but I think it's useful to have the numbers in it. To add the second one, we simply click the plus here, then new, and then do the same things again. So that's base color, image texture, open, select our PNG file. In this case, I want to choose slide2.png, open image, and then double click, and we'll name this PNG2. I'll quickly do that for the other four. So now we have our six materials. I'm going to make sure the first one selected. I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, which is selected the whole shape in this case. And then the first thing I'll do is click assign, which will assign the first image at the moment to the whole shape, and then we'll add it to individual faces. So we'll click assign. We won't be able to see anything because we need to switch the view to one of these. The render display render preview will allow us to see the shape with the textures applied to it. So now we need to select just one face. So we want to make sure we're in edit mode here. Click here for face select and then click on this single face. This has already got the correct image on it, but it just needs to be resized. And to do that, we can click U on the keyboard and then choose Unwrap. There's our first panel done. To do the rest, it's quite simple because we are already in edit mode. We can just click on the face, select PNG2 and click Assign. Then click U and choose Unwrap. Now we have two faces on there. We'll do the third one and then I'll show you how to rotate to do the fourth, fifth and sixth. So we'll click on the third one. Go to PNG3, assign, press U on the keyboard, and then unwrap. To rotate on the viewport, you can hold down the middle mouse button and drag. So I'm going to rotate to the ones we haven't filled in yet, then click on them, which will select the face. In this case, I want PNG4, 
assign, you on the keyboard and unwrap. Middle mouse button will rotate. Just got two more to do now. So here, PNG5, assign, you on the keyboard, unwrap. Finally, PNG6, assign, you on the keyboard, unwrap. Now we can click on this camera icon here, which will just reset the view so we can see where we are, but it's basically done. So now let's export it and then add it to PowerPoint. To do that, we'll go to File, Export. We want to choose this bottom option. And we're going to save it as a GLB file. Select where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in here and call it cube-slides.glb and then hit this button here to export. That's now saved the GLB file. So let's jump straight into PowerPoint and add it in. Here we can start with a blank presentation. So we'll right click, go layout blank, then insert 3D models, this device, and select the file that we've just saved. Once inserted, we can click to move it around as we want. We can even scale it up or down. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo that. And from these preset 3D model views, you can select various rotations. So I'm going to select this one here, right? And if I hold down shift, roll over the arrow at the top and drag around to the right, we can rotate it. So we'll start there. Now, all we have to do, press Ctrl D to duplicate the slide, make sure that morphs turned on and it will rotate to anything you want. So we can go to 3D model. This one, I'm going to select this view here, top. You can select anything you want. It depends where you put the images on the faces in Blender. Now, if we run this from the beginning, you'll see it says let's begin and then beautifully rotates to our next slide. We can go back. We can even scale this up. If you hold down control and shift and drag from the corner. You'll see how we can zoom back out and then scale up and you can do anything you want with this. So if we want to control D again for our next slide, you can either manually drag it round to any position you want or you can go to the presets and then choose what you want. Again, you can hold down shift and drag it round to rotate there. And now you can see the really cool effects that you can get with this. So I'll just finish this off here, control D again, go to 3D model, choose whichever one we want. Rotate it as you like. We'll just quickly add the last two in, control D to duplicate the slide. 3D model, we can click on any 3D model view, rotate it as we need. I'll finally do number six, which is this one here, rotate it as we need. Now, if we run from the beginning, it will zoom in and rotate with this amazing 3D model, and you can get any effects out of this that you like using the 3D model effect. And it will always rotate correctly in this 3D model. You can even choose other effects from animations as long as this is selected. You can see here, PowerPoint has some built-in animations for these. So for example, if I clicked on this, then added this leave option, you could see how it fades back, or these jump and turn options, swing or turntable. Once you have the 3D model, you can animate it in whatever way you like. If we want, we can add a background to these slides. So I could go to something like gradient fill, drag these away, choose whatever color I want from here and whichever color I want for this one, and then choose the direction that I want. From here, we can apply that to all the slides by simply choosing gradient fill for each one. So there's a really awesome way to bring your slides to life. And if you want to change them, you can simply change the original PowerPoint, save the file, then go back into Blender, reopen your file in Blender, and then re-export it. So for example, I can just go into Blender. Once your PNG file has been saved in the same place and you reopen it, it will appear on here, and you can just go to File, Export, and bring it back in again. If you want to use my Blender file, 
I'll save a link to it in the description below. And if you want to become a PowerPoint expert, watch one of the next videos. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, press subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.